Thanks, Sue. So my name's Alison McCarthy. I'm a mechatronic engineer at the National Centre for Engineering and Agriculture, which is a research centre uh, within the University of Southern Queensland uh, up in Toowoomba. So mechatronic engineering is uh, mechanical, electrical, computer systems all merged. Um, so we work on uh, developing robotic systems. And our research centre uh, specialises in um, developing these kinds of systems for agriculture. Uh, so uh, the research project that I'm working on with uh, TIA is funded through the Rural R&D for Profit program uh, and uh, together with uh, Cotton Research and Development Corporation uh, and Dairy Australia. Okay, so my research is mainly in variable rate irrigation. Um, this is because, as uh, James was saying, um, there can be a lot of variability in irrigation requirements within a field because of different um, soil properties or uh, elevation, or also things like plant density. Um, and you can use variable rate hardware on you know, center pivots on natural moves to be able to uh, spatially deliver the irrigation requirements. Um, typically, these systems. So typically, to use these systems, as James was saying, you know, collect an electrical conductivity map might be NDVI or elevation, and you load these into the hardware. Ah, there we go. Awesome. Okay, so the commercial variable rate systems, for our sites up in Queensland, they've cost around the 1500 to $2,000 a hectare amount, but I've been informed here that they've got systems for lower around the six to $800 a hectare. Could be because we're researchers and they're getting these set up on trial sites. Um, and this usually covers things like the variable rate hardware, um, GPS software, and also remote access to be able to remotely upload um, your prescription maps. In um, research trials and commercial applications of the variable rate hardware, typical kind of um, productivity improvements and water savings are in the uh, up, up to 20% mark. Um, and these are generally well, it can be for a range of things from, you know, dealing with the different soil types, but also just not irrigating the unproductive areas in the field. Um, and also I think we found, um, talking to some of the variable rate uh, suppliers, is that the actual um, continued use of variable rate isn't fantastic. Um, when we're talking to Bali, it was something like 10% of the variable rate irrigation hardware purchase was actually still being used, um, you know, 10 years later, uh, for variable rate irrigation. Um, and some of the reasons behind this are things like, um, well, lack of or limited decision support in, in knowing uh, how to develop the irrigation prescription maps and, and how to adapt those um, through the season. So there's a bit of our, uh, research going on um, internationally um, on developing these prescription maps for variable rate irrigation systems uh, and also for a range of crops, so mainly horticulture, corn, pasture and cotton. Uh, the research we're doing at our centre is um, on applying control system techniques over to irrigation. So linking together a range of different data layers, so things like weather, soil, um, and plant mapping in the field, uh, and being able to analyze those different la layers to work out what the irrigation requirements are. Other kind of research going on includes um, some work in Landcare Research New Zealand, uh, developing wireless soil moisture sensor networks, which uh, determine the irrigation requirements based on soil moisture deficit for each zone in the field and also work in Texas on infrared um, thermometers that are actually installed on irrigation machines. And they, so they use canopy temperature to determine variation in stress around a field. The work that we're doing at the NCEA, as I said, was around kind of applying a control systems approach. Um, so typically a control system um, 
and has three components. We've got sensors, which go and measure variability in the field. This could be things like fixed sensors, like soil moisture sensors, um, historical maps like uh, electrical conductivity and NDVI. And also on-the-go sensors. Um, this includes um, sensors that you might install on uh, tractors, UAVs, um, and or the irrigation machine itself. Um, and the kind of sensor that we've been looking at are actually cameras, which can uh, collect imagery of the crop. Um, and then we develop image analysis algorithms that can automatically process those images to determine um, different plant parameters. Uh, so for the crops I've been looking at for pasture, well, for perennial ryegrass, I've been looking at uh, things like uh, estimating the length of the, the height of the pasture using images. For other crops I've been looking at, say, um, for cotton, we've been look, uh, estimating the number of flowers and fruit on the plant. Next, we've got a control strategy that goes and converts all those, la all those layers of data to an irrigation application. I'll go through some of the control strategies in the next slide. Um, and then we've got the, the real-time adjustment of the irrigation uh, hardware. So that's reading in all the, the, out, the prescription map developed from the control strategy um, and then variably applying the irrigation. Okay. So, control system components. Um, I mentioned all the layers of data that we've got. There's two main different types of control strategies that we're looking at. Um, one is purely sensor-based. Um, so, for example, I mentioned before, you know, using a soil moisture sensor network for determining your irrigation prescription map. Um, this is an example of a sensor-based control strategy. You might read just re uh, reading in the measurements. Uh, uh, analyzing those to work out your deficit and then applying those in your different zones in the field. Uh, we're also looking at another approach called model-based um, irrigation control. And what this enables you to do is actually integrate a, a range of different data layers. Um, so uh, what it involves is using a, a crop production model that reflects what's happening in the field. Because if you have a, a model of a system that's reflecting your field conditions, you're actually then able to do some optimization and some forecasting on what the irrigation requirements might be, say, in the next week. Uh, but something we found that's important is the, the model has to reflect what's, um, what your crop is doing. Uh, and to do that, we read in uh, things like historical weather, um, weather forecasting, uh, soil properties, uh, current soil moisture, and also we found we need those um, crop measurements to be able to make sure that the model crop growth is tracking um, to what's happening uh, in the model. And this is where our um, camera-based machine vision sensors come in, because um, models typically use things like um, crop height um, and, and uh, approximate or, uh, dry matter uh, for prediction. And it can be pretty labour intensive to have to measure those at a high spatial and, uh, resolution and also frequently. So by using camera-based systems, we're able to uh, better automate this crop information data collection. Uh, and also in some comparisons that we've been doing between the sensor-based and model-based control strategies, we found that um, here, as we go towards the right, we've got more data being used to calibrate or to um, make the irrigation decision for the sensor-based and the model-based control strategy. And we found that when we didn't have a lot of information in the field, that the model-based strategy didn't work very well and wasn't able to um, achieve what a sensor-based strategy could achieve. But when we had a lot of information calibrating that model and then using the model for optimization, there was potential for um, um, a bit. It was around the, the 10 to 20 percent yield improvement. Uh, and also here's an example of a, a model calibration where we've got sensed information. Um, this was a leaf area index in blue. Um, the red is a calibrated model. And then the green here is the uncalibrated model. So we can see that 
uh, by collecting information so that the plant are able to get the, um, the model reflecting what's happening in the field. And then we can better use that for optimization. <coughs> yes, it was out here. Okay. Um, so I'll give a bit of an overview of the machine sensing that we use. Um, uh, for estimating the, the pasture growth. We, um, for all our two sites um, that we're working on with TIA, we've actually put um, cameras on the irrigation machine. So this is a, the pivot at the Elliott Research Centre. This was when we had three cameras on the field. We've now got seven on that irrigation machine. And we actually um, just have smartphones installed along the machine. It is $50 smartphones, and we've developed an app that can go and uh, uh, take an image, get the GPS, and then upload those to a server. So then we can analyze those and, and know where they were taken in the field and then develop um, a map. Um, so here's some sample analysis. I'm not sure if that's come up very well, but um, here's some images collected from the cameras um, and some uh, what, this is what the analysed image looks like. Here we're extracting lines in the image for the perennial ryegrass to estimate the, the length of the line and the height um, of the pasture. And we can see here we're doing some comparisons of height uh, uh, collected using a, the CDAC sensor. And so um, these show some um, good re oh, promising results for using Im imagery for the, um, the ryegrass monitoring. This is a sample interface um, um, for the, the VeriWise software that I'm developing, uh, or I've developed, which um, goes and does all the, um, the data analysis. So it reads in all those different data layers um, and generates the irrigation prescription map. So for example, this is an electrical conductivity map of uh, a local uh, a Queensland dairy field and some uh, irrigation prescription maps that were developed using the software. Okay, so where we want to get to with this is um, a, a fully autonomous irrigation system that can read in uh, different data layers, you know, you might have the, you know, the latest soil moisture sens sensor data in the field, new images coming in from um, your cameras, the cameras, we don't mind what platform the cameras are on. If they're on a drone, then we can read those in. Um, here I've got the example of them on the irrigation machine. And so as the machine is moving over the field, we can go and um, update our optimizations and update the irrigation prescription map that's being used by the um, variable rate. All right, that was probably done. That was probably about it. I just had some other uh, applications of machine vision that were also developing at our research centre. So we use a range of different um, cameras and platforms. Here we're looking at um, location of irrigation water in uh, these are surface irrigated fields, um, putting thermal cameras on towers and also on drones to uh, detect where water is in the field. Um, this helps growers know when to switch off um, the, the irrigation that's being applied. And uh, another application is um, actually monitoring the crops just from a, a tower in the field. Um, so we've done some work in monitoring variety trials where there are uh, different plots within a field where each plot is a different variety. It might be, you know, a plot might be two by 10 metres in dimension. And we're using the imagery to detect the, um, the flowering date and the daily growth rate of the, the plants in each plot. Um, when, as a, uh, the camera uh, collects the daily image. And the last example is just, um, also using drones, but to detect other things in the field. Oh, 
and I deleted that one. We, we're also looking at things like de um, detecting weeds in a field from drones. So um, that was a bit of a summary of the research that we're doing at the NCEA on uh, irrigation automation and also machine vision. Uh, we're at a stage now in the project uh, uh, refining the image analysis algorithms for the pasture detection um, and also linking in with the commercial variable rate irrigation hardware so that we can automatically feed in those prescription maps. Okay, thank you.